Hey guys, Jason here in the layout room. Uh, quick update for a Sunday evening. I uh, posted a few photos uh, late last week. I picked up this uh, Walters uh, Prairie Co-op green kit. Um, I was at the hobby shop and I uh, wasn't actually expecting to find this, but this was right up my alley because I had the uh, the ADM green uh, silo or ADM green uh, facility uh, which was too big for my layout so um, I needed to replace that and this was this is perfect because this is basically the same type of industry but uh, considerably considerably smaller so the last photos I posted were after about uh, 15 or 20 minutes of assembly I just had some basic just had the silos um, put together and, th and that one that was it and then uh, over the weekend I spent some time on this and uh, I've got a finished product. So here it is. Um, well, I should say finished minus, uh, I'll probably do some weathering, but uh, this is the completed assembled and painted kit. Um, this is the side where the, the grain is distributed to the rail cars. I'll show the other side shortly. You can see up here, I believe that's called the, um, the dust collector. That guy right there, there's, um, I was doing some reading about these, there's some rules, as far as industries are concerned, um, there's some rules around um, how much dust you can kick out uh, when you're transporting goods. And so um, these types of fixtures are mandatory for industries like these, which can kick up a, a lot of dust. And so there's different types of dust collectors too. There's static ones and I believe there's even mobile dust collectors for I was reading about dust collectors for um, uh, uh, rail cars that serve uh, team tracks where a permanent dust collector probably wouldn't be found. So this is the, I forget, I think this is called the head house on top of the, the silos. Um, you can see in the back, I'll turn around a little bit, but that's the, um, that's the unloading shed for the trucks driving and out. And then down here is the office. Uh, which I painted. All of this came, by the way, um, this was all, these were all painted. This comes uh, in a plastic kit and the, the, the color is basically uh, this really ugly tan color. Um, and so all of this had to be painted and I'm, I'm probably the world's worst painter and I'm, I'm fairly impatient. So this was a challenge for me. So anyways, here's the office um, as well as the scale track. Scale track's a little dirty because I, I did some um, test weathering with my powders on there and uh, it was a complete train wreck, <laughs> no pun intended. The uh, powders went on way too thick and so um, I ran this under the sink and with some vigorous scrubbing got most of the powder out. So, um, And this is precisely the reason why I started the weathering on this piece instead of weathering um, the silos themselves because this would be a lot harder to wash. So anyways, getting back to the office, uh, we've got, this is called the, uh, did some looking up on this too, it's called a sampling probe. So I don't know much about farming or the, uh, the grain industry, but um, on the box, you can see it's, it's painted yellow. And so I did a little bit of research, basically went to Google and looked at some pictures and images. And what I found is that you can pretty much, if you get this kit, um, paint this sampling probe any color under the rainbow you would like and it would be prototypical because um, there are all kinds of different colors of these sampling probes. And um, I'll pause here just for a few seconds because I'm going to throw up a few images um, during this video clip and you can take a look at just kind of a sample of the different colors that, uh, that I found that were available on the internet. So I went in ahead and I chose blue. Um, I did paint it two different colors. Um, the actual probe itself I painted silver. Uh, you don't have to do that again from the samples that, I, that I'm that i gonna show. I think what you'll see is, um, it seems like in the majority of the cases the probe um, is actually the same color as the remainder of the equipment. So the probe can be all kinds of different colors too. It doesn't have to be silver, but I did find one 
uh, or two where the probe is actually silver and a different color. I just like, I like the idea of having different contrasting colors um, for the probe. And uh, the kit itself uh, went together fairly easy. Just take some, you know, time cutting the sprue, cutting the pieces out of the sprues and filing. Um, I probably did one of my better painting jobs, um, but I did, everything was perfect up until when I went to start to paint the probe um, at the very end with some blue acrylic paint. And I did mask it all off with uh, frog tape, but a little bit of the paint bled onto my structure base here. And so I tried to clean that up with some color matched acrylic paint and, and it just got worse. So um, what I did is I just kind of evenly painted around the, the base of the probe. I don't know, you can, we can call that a concrete patch, but suffice to say it's got some character now. It's not perfect, um, but we'll live with it. Uh, if I turn this around the back, got some detailed parts here. Uh, we got some water uh, or some um, gutter uh, drain spouts coming down. Had to attach those and paint them. Actually did that in reverse order. Painted them first, then attached them. Uh, most of this, probably 99% of this kit, I spray painted. So, um, which took some planning, um, planning had to, to figure out, you know, what color I wanted to paint each, each item because uh, I painted most of these parts while they were still in the sprues because I found out spray painting really tiny detailed parts, um, the spray paint, the, the velocity of the paint coming out in the can just blows the parts um, right off my painting platform and it, it's kind of difficult. So um, I painted things within the sprues and then I cut them out. You can also see uh, an electrical meter on the back here too. I painted that silver. Hopefully that shows up good. Um, so again, I'll, I'll probably weather these office doors so they're not so bright white. Um, and the base of this office is the same color as, uh, the same paint as what I used for the, um, the weighing scale, as well as the, um, what do you call this, the head house, tower head? I forget what that's called. Um, anyways, it's, 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 a, it's a textured paint. It's supposed to look like cement. Um, I find it a little, as I was looking at it today, um, it's you could probably call it a little overscale. If I was really aggressive and ambitious, I could probably sand this down and knock down some of the, the grain on there. You know, actually probably look a little bit more like uh, cement, um, but I probably won't do that. Um, well, I'm gonna call this good. All right, so now we can see the other side. Um, see the uh, the unloading shed a little bit better. Um, this has the option to put the garage door or the, the shed doors on there. I left them off for now because I do have, uh, for my layout, layout, I've got diesel trucks and I think I'll probably want to model trucks inside the shed or near the shed. So I'm gonna leave the doors off for now. If I change my mind later, um, what I did is I did not glue the roof down. So the roof will come right off and give me easy access to putting the uh, the doors back in if I should so wish to to put those on there. But for now, you know, you can see I painted the um, the unloading shed floor. It's the same cement texture as the silos. I turned a little bit more. Um, as far as the kit, uh, these silos actually come in the form of um, like half tubes, like if you cut a roll of toilet paper uh, or empty toilet paper roll in half um, vertically um, and, and cut the circumference in half basically. Um, it comes with those two sides, those two half tubes, and then there's these flat spaces on either side. So you glue or cement the tubes, the half tubes up against these flat pieces and uh, that was fairly easy to do, but what I found was, I don't know if it's visible here, um, inevitably it does leave some seams, no matter how perfect you are. And so the seams become visible. Um, what I did is, uh, and I found this out after I painted it, the seams were still visible. I thought that the, the paint would fill in the gap of the seams, but it didn't. 
So what I did is, um, I could see that that was not going to look the best. And so I sanded the seams down a little bit. And what I had on hand was I had some wood putty or wood filler putty on top of that. And um, I basically just used it like spackle, took a putty knife and just put lightly put a little bit amount, a little bit goes a long way. And just filled the gaps and um, it dries real quick and then I sanded it down a little bit so it was smooth and then I repainted it and uh, you can you can barely see the joints here but I think that looks pretty good might be a little bit more noticeable um, you know depending on the light so here we the lighting is, is actually casting a shadow on the back so you can see it a little more but um, that's good enough for me and same with the other side I actually had a big mess on this side I had I had painted it um, and and then I smudged it with my finger which I was really mad about and so I tried scraping it off and the more I tried to fix it the bigger mess that I made so I just kind of scraped this whole side sanded it and then repainted it um, I did use a couple of coats this textured paint um, comes out pretty fast and pretty thick so what I found is early on it, when I sprayed close I mean it, it really sprays a pool of paint onto the building and it's so thick and it just starts to almost it looks like it's gonna drool a little bit and um, I found it was uh, you know a better technique is to you know get back about this far you know at least a foot and spray so you're blasting it with with pigment and you're blasting it with texture um, you're not going to be able to get it all in one coat but i think that's kind of the the best way to do this if you're using that 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 paint and the, the paint is um rust-oleum textured paint and i think the color is uh like coral caribbean sand i think is what it's called and um so stand back a little ways spray it it won't smudge up um, and then do multiple coats, two or three coats. It goes, it goes fast. And um, but I ended up using more than one can of paint of that uh, that paint for this. I probably didn't need to if I didn't hadn't smudged it and hadn't had to do touch ups. I probably could have done all of this with a single can of paint. But and also I did the head house again. I think that's called is is the same. It's made out of cement. And also there was. There are some cracks in these seams here on the corners too where they didn't come together tightly and so I used the same uh, wood putty technique to get get these cracks, sanded them, and then repainted. So I think it turned out pretty good considering I am not a very good modeler I'm, and I'm definitely not, admittedly, not a, a good painter at all. Um, but I used some frog tape and again mostly spray paint for this. At the very end, I, I picked up some acrylic paint, and I had some enamel paint, and I painted the crane. Um, did a little touch up on the on the on the on the brickwork here. Um, the roof brown again was spray paint. Uh, the gutter, uh, the gutter spouts, drain spouts are were spray paint. So I ended up picking. A, I went to uh, the big box store, and I picked up about five different um, colors of spray paint. Um, several of them were. I think primer and paint built into one, so that's what the gray is. That's what the I believe the white is, um, and possibly the brown. So um, I think it turned out well. You can see how the how it looks with trains going under there. Not a lot of clearance there, but um, so this is gonna allow me to use a lot of well, not a lot, but. It'll allow me to use my green cars on my lot, which are my favorite type of car, covered hoppers. Um, I've got a pretty good mix of, for covered hoppers, a mix between um, green hoppers and plastic pellet hoppers, which I admittedly sounds stupid, but I kind of just learned the difference not too long ago. So um, I think I would like, now I know all the green hoppers can, can go to this industry. Um, I'd still like to have a use for all my plastic pellet covered hoppers and so I'm probably going to look for uh, a plastic pellet industry and um, I'll throw up a couple of pictures here at the very end of this video that a couple of pictures that I took today my son and I went to the hobby shop in my old neighborhood in Bloomington, Minnesota 
And um, there's some rail action there uh, from a short line called Progressive Rail. And um, they have a lot of covered hoppers there serving um, plastic pellet industries. So I, I, drove, I drove to the industries today uh, where they had the car spot and I took a few pictures and so I'll share those pictures um, of what those kind of industries look like. And it's kind of interesting because they're all tightly packed in a city landscape. And so it looks like the trains are driving, you know, the cars are being delivered in a back alleyway and they're being spotted in an alley um, and they're being, um, you know, emptied, vacuumed out. The plastic pellets are being vacuumed out into a series of, of tubes and hoses and they end up in the factory. So uh, that is it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and upload this to YouTube. I hope Hope you enjoyed. Uh, my next kit, next kit that I'm going to be looking for is um, Medusa cement um, because I would like to. I think we're going to put Medusa cement up in this uh, tight corner back here. That's what this cutout is for. Medusa cement is seven by nine, so I think that'll fit there. And then um, I'm also going to be looking for that plastic pellet industry. And then, uh, where is it? Oh, last but not least, um, I bought this guy pre-built and pre-weathered off eBay. Um, it's a background building. It's the Walters Armstrong Electric. And the idea was um, I was going to use it as a background building industry up in the other corner of my layout back here. And so that was going to be perfect for spotting box cars and maybe a gondola here and there, maybe a flat car for um, shop equipment. But unfortunately I ran into a problem. I'd use this strip for, uh, you know, the, to show the footprint and the dimensions. And I, I thought that this industry would work. But when I got it, the, the footprint dimensions advertised by Walther's um, do not take into account the loading dock. And so I only had about an inch and a half to work with here before I run into track. And so had the loading not, dock not been on there, this would work perfect. However, the loading dock is on there and you can see what the problem is. It's it's laying right on the track. So now, I, now I'm kind of disappointed because it's a it's a great looking building. The guy who built it did a great job uh, weathering it, and um, he didn't seal it. So one change I made is as soon as I got it, um, I sealed it. So now the chalk doesn't come off all over my fingers as I touch it. So it's sealed. I'd like to think that's a value add. But um, so I got two options. I can just get rid of the building and resell it on eBay. And I I admit I I way overpaid for this build this building. I got kind of into a bidding war with someone, but. Um, it looked it looked great and it was gonna be perfect for my layout um, but unfortunately the you know the dock is too large the other option that I have is I could surgically I suppose I could cut the dock off so that I cut it flush with the you know the front or whatever this is the back of the building so that box cars could come in and we don't necessarily need a dock that, you know, they can just throw those giant steel plates um, out from the loading dock doors right into the box. Um, that is another option. However, I don't know how well that I'm going to be able to cut that dock off. I might end up making a mess of this thing um, because it's, it's glued on there with a lot of glue. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so basically I'd have to go in there with the Dremel and just really lop the thing off. The dock itself is probably not going to be salvageable. Lop it off and then um, with the first cut of the Dremel and then uh, using the motor tool or some kind of sander um, buff the rest of that, you know, the dock, the remaining uh, jagged edge of the dock, buff that out. And then, and then it's going to have to be painted because you can see there's no weathering really to speak of underneath there and, and it and it would need to be painted to match and kind of blend in with the rest of the paint at the base of the foundation of the building so that would allow me to continue to use the building 
there's a third option, and that is the Armstrong Electric building. Um, as far as a build configuration, it's it's actually quite versatile. So versatile. So two things: um, the building comes in, I think it's two or three lengths. So this is the longest length. Um, so I could actually get the same building, but in a shorter length, which sets it back, it squishes it further this way, and that inevitably pushes the dock back that way. And that gives me some wiggle room to move the track. So I can, coming out of the turnout here, I can, I can kind of S-curve and kind of avoid, you know, avoid, avoid that dock. The other option is um, the docks themselves. Uh, when this kit is built, can actually be built in any of these positions here at the bottom. So this particular one would happen to be built, the modeler choose to put the dock, you know, one window from the, the far right of the building. You can actually, you know, he could have taken this, the loading dock doors and put them, you know, for instance, way down here. So that would be an option. Um, but again, both of those options um, exclude the use of this building, which I've already bought and paid for and overpaid for. And so that means I'd have to sell this building. So uh, it's a solvable problem. I just got to figure out which way I want to go. And so maybe uh, folks watching this video, maybe you got some suggestions. In theory, coming out of this turnout, I can, you know, I'm, I'm using, is this the flex track? No. Um, in theory, I could use flex track make a sharp left coming out of the turnout and then kind of make a right and I could I could avoid the dock but that's going to create an S curve right here it's going to be tight I think it's just going to be stupid I think it's the wrong solution I think it's the right building um, it's just not the right configuration because I definitely like the building so I'll be thinking about that this week, figure out what I want to do, assuming I'm going to put Armstrong Electric up here. I'm also kicking around an idea of maybe it's not Armstrong Electric, maybe it's a team track up there. I don't really like this idea. Or maybe it's, you know, a lumber mill up there so the industry kind of goes on this side and we just, you know, scene, put some scenery over here. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I really, I really like this building. This is a road I would have really had my heart set on. So we'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. Take care.